Hey everyone, I know we still have several people on here already a little early, so I thought I'd pop on and make sure everything is good to go. Uh, my husband Adam is manning the comments, and so he is going to be the one shouting out questions to me here. Um, and this is our first time doing a live anything, so normally we edit everything ahead of time, so please give me a little grace here because it's going to be interesting. We have both of our kids here, one of which is two months old today. Um, we tried to schedule the feeding so that way we wouldn't have to do it in the middle of this, but you know, she might go longer. You never know. And uh, our other daughter is currently being entertained by her tablet, uh, which unfortunately has happened a lot. And I think a lot of parents are dealing with this right now as they're trying to work and have their kids home with them. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming and joining and especially for making masks. This is a really great cause. We are very excited. I mean, it's sad that we're at a point where the supply for PPE is so low that hospitals are actually asking home service to make it. But it is fantastic that our community has stepped up the way it has in order to help provide our communities with the care that it needs. And from what I've read, the masks that we are making are used a couple of ways. Um, they are used over N95 masks to help get a little bit more life out of that. And they're also used in non-COVID-19 situations so that the more um, the actual PPE that's manufactured for that can be saved for the people who need it for COVID-19. So I'm making um, a bunch of ones. I've been working on this already. I probably have about um, oh, five or so hours in this already because my hospital is asking for an Olsen style mask um, and I'm happy to sew it for them. Um, I had my daughter two months ago today and it was not an easy delivery and I'm not talking about it being long and it hurting, although it did hurt. My epidural did not work in one place and one place is all it takes for it to hurt. But I needed oxygen for several hours and I ended up having an emergency C-section. So I was not awake. I was under anesthesia when I had that baby and my husband was not allowed in the room. And I'm so grateful that all the equipment and everything was there and available because that's what gave me my happy, healthy baby today. And by doing this, we're helping to make sure that everybody has the resources they need um, just for every run of the day, regular things that people have to deal with, like a birth not going as easily as everyone would have hoped it would have and your regular car accident or whatever is going on. So thank you all for starting and doing this with us. Um, if you um, are new to this, we've got some prizes that we're going to be giving away. Um, we've got a link in the video description to a form on our website. Make sure you click to open that in a new window. Otherwise, just come back later. That's fine. Um, but we're going to give away some prizes. We'll contact the winners after the live stream is done because we didn't think through a really good way to draw them on the live stream. Like I said, it's our first time doing this, so it's going to be interesting. Um, but we've got some three big prizes that we're going to give away. Um, and my husband, Adam, is also going to pop that link down um, in the chat function. So if you're watching this on YouTube, the chat should be running on the right-hand side. We're going to give away our complete collection of printed patterns. This is a lot of patterns. I think it's some like 20 some patterns that you guys, one of you is going to win. So if you like pull out of and you like our patterns, um, we have a lot in here. A lot of them are scrap friendly and fat quarter friendly. So if you're stuck in home for a while and you need something to do, this is we keep you busy for quite some time. We're also going to give away a copy of my book, Simple Quilts for the Modern Home. And we're going to give away a geometric garden kit. Um, this has everything you need for the top and binding. What size is this? This is a lap size version. Um, it's actually quite large. Um, what I made, I think is 80 by 80. And so it's it's really pretty and it has like seed and floral things in it. So it's a cheery quilt to work on, especially at a time like this. So with that, I am gonna start. It is about six o'clock. Um, I have, like I said, I pre-sewn a, a lot because the pattern that my hospital is asking for is a little complicated. So I've basically gotten it to the point of, um, if you guys were just doing the surgical mask, that's where we're at with ours. And so I'm going to set these to the side and then I'm actually going to be pinning for a while because I've done a lot of the sewing here. I suppose I can talk you through like how I prepped it. So if you guys have 
a pattern that's a little bit more challenging as well, you can see how to get through and sort of chain piece it more. So what I did, I was able to cut about three um, masks from one half yard of fabric. So I would lay out all the pieces um, and I print out multiple copies of the pattern. And then what I did was, this it comes in multiple pieces. So there's an ear flat piece and a nose piece, and this is on the lining. So I sewed and I cut everything first, and then I did all, I pressed all my hems down and chain stitched all of these down. And then there's also a hem on this piece as well. You can see it on the center. So I did all that hemming first, and then I had to arrange this so that they're overlapped just slightly. You can see on the back that there's some overlap there. So I sewed all, pinned all that, and then I sewed all these together. So I had 40 total that I was doing because there's two for each side of the lining. And then once I got all those sewn together, I sewed down the curves of the nose piece for all of my linings and for all of my exteriors. So at this point, I'm ready to pin my pieces together and start sewing. Um, I kind of use my batik stash for this because I have not gotten to use my stash in a long time. Um, you can see kind of my stash is over here and a random chair that my daughter uses when she's in here sewing with me. But uh, this section over here was very full with batiks and I've cut up a lot of it for this project. Um, when I open the quilt shop, uh, ultimately it, almost everything I sew needs to help promote something new that's in the store. So anything that I've had since before we opened the store uh, kind of has hung out there for a while. So now it's getting a really good usage. And Batik fabric actually has a little bit tighter weave than your regular quilting cotton. So I think this is going to be really good for this project because it's going to help keep up more of those particles. So. With that, I'm gonna stop talking for a second and I'm gonna have my husband tell me a few of the questions that are popping up. One of the big ones right now is uh, people are, some people are saying it filled, filled out the page to the five, but the page to the eight does not exist. Like after they fill it out? Sounds good. Okay, well, let's see. Okay, yeah. Let me make sure I publish this. We, like I said, this is our first time doing a live thing. Activate now. Okay. I think it is now functional. Adam, will you test it real quick? And then I think it's functional. And if not, then we'll fix it and we'll get it going. I was testing now. While he's filling that out, I would love to hear where all you guys are from and how many masks you hope to do tonight and how many masks you've done already. I think that would be really fun. I've, I've been hearing from all of you uh, because, as you know, we've been giving away a twist size um, to use for nose pieces. And we are currently attempting to ship out 40,000 of those by the end of the weekend uh, because it was just an overwhelming response. I can't believe how many masks you guys are making. It's just phenomenal. And thank you so much for that. Um, it's really going to make a difference. All right. Is that form working? Yes. Okay. The form is now working. So if you tried to fill it out and you got a weird message, just go fill it out one more time. And it is functional now. So sorry about that. Like I said, this is the first time we've done a live anything. And so we might have a few bugs. My baby might start crying. My daughter might come in. And she did her own makeup for this, by the way. So she's a little rainbow and glitter covered right now if she Somebody happens to pop on. Well, I am actually making all of mine out of the cheek. Um, and I chose that because it has such a tight weave um, because the, the main issue with these is, is it's just cotton, right? It's not actually protective fabric, um, but it will still be breathable. I mean, they wear this in Indonesia where it's hotter than blazes so it, as a garment. So it's going to breathe. It's 100% it's cotton. But that weave is going to be tighter. So I thought that that would be a little bit better and maybe a little bit safer um, granted, nothing is going to be as good as an N95 mask, but it's better than nothing. So that's my thought on it. 
and that's why I'm making all mine number cheek and they'll be really pretty and maybe give somebody a little bit of brightness and cheeriness to their day uh, when they're really going through a very difficult time for our healthcare workers. We have, can you hear Adam? Can you guys hear him? We're from all, oh, it sounds like all over the U.S., so that is really cool. Ooh, we have someone who wants, Deborah Hyatt wants to do 40 tonight. Hi? Deborah Hyde. Deborah Hyde wants to do 40 tonight, so that would be fantastic if you could do that. That would be really cool. Well, we can help with that. We can get you more fabric. Can you guys hear Adam, or should we get him a little closer? He does. He is not an on-camera kind of a guy, so we are not going to be able to get him on camera, but we could definitely get him a little closer if you can't hear him. So let me know in the comments, or him. He's the one who can read them. I can just see you guys. Somebody from Brunswick, Georgia, her group has sold 111 and distributed so far in the last six days. That is fantastic. Maybe what we'll do is we'll send you guys. They somebody from Queensland, Australia. From Australia, we have someone on here. That is fantastic. This is really a global effort. I mean, it really is going to take all of us. Um, most importantly, all of us to just stay home for a little while. I've seen all kinds of memes of like quilters. We've been preparing for this. Like, you know, we have fabric that we can stay home and sew forever. Um, but this is a great way to use our, our talents and our resources um, and go through that stash. And, and then, you know, you'll have a really great reason to go buy a bunch more fabric when this is all over. Or during if you happen to run out while you're doing this. The, um, somebody says that they are using, in Oklahoma City, they're using celery foil ties donated by the local bed section and the local grocery store for those things. That's fantastic. So can they hear you or no? No, they can. Okay, Adam, you've got to come closer because if you're going to be talking and telling me all the good things, then they need to be able to hear you. Otherwise, it's just going to be weird and I'm going to have to repeat everything that you say. He's going to have to face his fears and come um, so you can at least hear him. I want to know how long it's been since you guys have worn real pants. That's That seems to be the question that everybody's talking about right now, too. For me, it's been since, like, middle of January <laughs> because I, well, I was pregnant, very pregnant. And uh, the last couple of weeks, I had a lot of appointments that I had to go to because my due date was a whole five days after my 35th birthday, which meant they treated it as a geriatric pregnancy. So fun. Um, so I pretty much just work from home at that time because there was so much going on. And I just wanted to be kind of uninterrupted and get as much done as I could uh, before I had the baby. And um, so I've basically been in sweatpants since middle of January. And I also, because of the emergency C-section, I couldn't drive for like four weeks afterwards. And so I feel like I already went through the, oh my gosh, I can't go anywhere in the sucks uh, portion of it. So this is kind of just like life is normal for me um, because we basically had the four weeks or couldn't do anything. And then there was like a two week break where I, I went, went to the garden center and I went to church. And I think those are the only places I went, <laughs> maybe the grocery store. And then, then this happened. So it's like, well, oh, well, it's just a little longer. But what types of masks are you guys all doing? Are you guys doing the surgical style or do you have specific ones that your hospital is asking for? There's somebody who works in an ER who took vacation. Yeah. Can you hear Adam now? We have a couple of Quad Cities watches. Oh, we have some locals. Awesome. Um, I'm doing the pattern for Unity Point that they put out, the Olsen sewing pattern. Uh, I know Genesis put out a different one, but they said that they would accept any maps that you guys have made. So that's fantastic. So are they able to hear you now, Adam? Yes, they can hear me. Oh, awesome. That means I don't have to repeat everything. Maybe someday I'll get him to be on camera or something. He's 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 not a social butterfly. I'm sure our daughter's gonna pop in at some point though. 
because she is. She got that for me. So let's see, who has made the most masks, I'm wondering? Uh, somebody wants to see the ones you're making. The ones I'm making? Okay, so let me finish pinning this one. So I'm based, I have 20 here to pin up. So they have put <clears throat> together, every hospital kind of has their own regulations of what they want or not. So what I'm doing is this one, it's inside out right now. This is maybe not the best one to show you on because it is. Let's do this. Okay, so this is my lining. Where can I find the pattern of the one you're making? The one I'm making? I gave it to you. I emailed it to you. So you can post that. That's the also, but the PDF isn't coming up as a red link. It's like a PDF. Are you able to post it somewhere? Just search like Unity Point Olson Mask, and I'm sure it'll pop up. They have a tutorial as well on how to do it. So um, this one, this is the lining piece, and it has a pocket on both sides, and they are going to be using HEPA filters from vacuum bags. Um, apparently, it is about the same material as what is in an N95 filter and has about the same amount of filtration, so it can protect them at about the same levels. And that way, they're able to just cut what they need, slide it in, and then re-sanitize after it's been used. So this is a lining piece, so it's going to go over like that, um, but, you know, be the other direction. And then the outside piece is just um, two pieces sewn together. So let me put these together. I don't have any actually sewn together yet. I'm getting to that point right now. So when it's all together, You've got your solid two pieces for the front, and then on the inside, you have an ear flap, and then you've got your pocket on both sides um, that that filter is going to go into. And the fun thing about this is I'm able to pin this right sides together, and because of this pocket in here, I'm going to be able to just sew all the way around the entire perimeter of this in one go. And then I can still turn it right sides out. So it's going to be pretty quick once I get to that point. Um, I just took a while to get to here because you've got to cut everything and do your your hems and then get your tabs sewn together. And so it's just, it's a little bit of a process to get to this point. Um, but my hospital, I know we put out the video on how to put in the little twist tie thing and how to do the um, straps if you can't line elastic. But our hospital has already procured a bunch of hair ties. And so they have specifically asked that we get it to this point and no further. Um, and then they're going to add on hair tie elastics as um, ear pieces. And then they have some double-sided tape that's for skin that they're going to use to help seal to the nose. Um, so that's, that's their plan and that's what they've asked for. So that's the specifications that I'm following because I want to be compliant with what they need so that way they can um, use it as much as they, they can with that. Somebody says they've been in pajama pants for two weeks. Two weeks. We can relate. <laughs> we can relate. There was one day where both me, my husband, my daughter, and then also the baby, none of us had gotten out of pajamas. And it was like, I don't know what, three, four in the afternoon. And I was like, are any of us going to put on real clothes today? <laughs> And it's just like, well, at least, you know, get up in the morning, change your underwear, and put on new pajamas. You don't need to do any more than that, but you at least need to do that much and, like, shower every other day, and you're, and you're pretty good. But, uh, but yeah, this is definitely comfy time. Uh, I'm glad that I have a steady supply of nursing bras, which don't have any underwires, because those things are fantastic for a time like this when you don't have to go anywhere. Somebody's wondering, are going to be selling ties to yours today? I am not because the hospital has specifically asked that we do not do that. Um, they want to apply their own hair elastics and size them um, to fit. So they're going to I hold this in either a little more or a little less depending on the size needs of their staff. So I'm getting as far as the hospital has asked us home sewers to get and no further. So. While I would love to do that and, and go all the way and, and get them finished, I'm going to respect what, what they want. And that way, they're more usable for them in their process. 
Somebody's asking where can we find the double sided tape? Double sided tape? I don't actually know. I'm assuming you can probably find stuff like that on Amazon. I would make sure you're looking for something that is um, like fashion tape or like meant for skin because I feel like just regular scotch double sided tape might be irritating to the skin. But they definitely make fashion tape. I mean, that's how all the celebrities stick their clothes to parts of their bodies that they don't want to be revealed. So it's a thing. It exists. Um, and I'm sure you can probably find some. And then probably we'll be out of all that because us quilters and sewers are getting very thrifty and finding all the things in order to help make it work. Um, but if Adam can find a way to share that PDF, um, they do sort of walk you through that in the instructions to kind of, you know, if you, we want you to go this far is what they've requested. But if you want to go further or make one for yourself or for your own institution, then they, they do give you those finishing steps, which I thought was very helpful. They also have a video, which uh, maybe what we'll do to so anybody who fills out that form, we'll shoot you an email afterwards. It would be really cool to know like how many you guys have made so that way we can share with everyone how many we got made during this two hour time span, as well as how many we all have made together as a whole. And um, then we'll share some of the links to these things as well, because obviously this is not the pattern I made in the video because this pattern came out after that. So I am doing what my local place wants so and you guys should all do the same check with your locals first and, and then go from there have you guys been batch sewing these i know that's what i did with mine like I, at first i cut everything and then i did all the hemming all at once now i'm pinning like 20 of them all at once before i sew anything um, i just find that just like you change piece when you're quilting i felt like this is making it go a lot faster for me because when I was just doing the two in the video, it just felt like it took a really long time to make. And it's because you're you're just doing the one. Um, but there's a lot of efficiencies that can be happening when if you're doing multiple at a time. So what are we seeing about that, Adam? Oh. Uh, trying to post something. He's trying to post something. He'll tell me about it. I also, now hear, yelling at me. I also hear our daughter yelling at us. <laughs> and it's not letting me post something. Is there a character? Oh, there's a character in there. Oh, there's apparently you're limited to 200 characters, I think, when you're posting. Are we seeing any other comments or are people just sewing away feverishly? Yeah, there's comments. I'm just... Like what? What are we I'm hearing? trying to get people to link to our twist ties, which we had available. And... Oh, yeah. We should probably talk about the twist ties. So. Maybe. We are going to make more available. We were, you exceeded our wildest expectations, all of you. We had 20,000 available to start with um, for you guys. I think that went, what, a day? Yeah. A little over a day. So we ordered 20,000 more, and we have are now at about 40,000. And so um, we are going to make more available, but we don't want you guys to like place an order today and then wonder why it hasn't shipped until like Tuesday. So what we're doing is this weekend, we're trying to get out the first 40,000. Um, so basically last night, well, I was, I've got a lot of it, twist ties. So much. Shit. So we actually have been weighing them. We're using my kitchen scale that, that my daughter and I use for baking cupcakes and measuring out grams of flour. We're measuring out grams of twist ties. And so Adam's got a chart of how much it weighs for every, um, you know, 50 or whatever. And so if you get, you know, a little more, or a little less, that, that's why we did not count every single one of 40,000. We're weighing them instead. So while I was cutting all these and working on all these, he's been busy shipping all that stuff out. So our goal is to get everything out by Monday. Right now we are working just the two of us out of our house because it is a stay in place um, order in Illinois. So we can't have staff in working. So we're just working this is my son room that I film out of and we have all the stuff set up in our living room right now. And then we have shipping supplies on shelves in our dining room. I had to take my wine bar down. Not that I'm drinking wine or have recently, but it's no longer in the dining room at the moment. So um, we're going to get those out first and then we will 
make more available to you guys. So if you want twist Somebody ties, to see a twist. oh, here's I a think twist that might tie. Be two this may be two. I'm being told, hard to say. Um, so this is it's just a twist tie. It's four inches long. And what you can do is you can slide it in like the nose piece at the top. And we show you how to do this in the video. But then it's bendable. So you can like mold it to your nose and then it gives you a little bit tighter seal. So it's like you can see here, it's now the shape of my large Italian nose. So um, a lot of people have been super into that. It is plastic, so it should be able to withstand some washings and be okay and not you know, fall apart or anything. Um, Somebody's asking also, I've seen a couple questions wondering if, if they're supposed to wash the fabric before making the masks. You know, I don't pre-wash anything. Um, the hospitals, when they get this, they're going to immediately sanitize it. Um, probably so that they don't bring any germs from the outside in. And then also because that's what you just have to do before you're going to um, give it to anybody to use for that. And they're washing is going to be far more sophisticated than your washing. So I would I would just leave that to them. Uh, like I said, I don't pre-wash any of my fabric. It might shrink just a smidge, but as long as you're using good quality fabric, um, it should be fine. And I wouldn't worry too much about that. Any other big questions? Besides that we'll have more twist ties available next week as soon as we finish shipping out 40,000. And thank you to all of you guys who are like ambitious enough to make 40,000 masks. It's going to make such a huge difference in all of our communities that are just be fantastic. Any other questions? A lot? It doesn't have to be about masks. You can ask about other stuff too. They do the batch They're doing batch sewing. What? I did like 20. I felt like that was a good number for me. Um, and I think I, if I had just like taken a day, I mean, essentially I'm taking a day to do these, um, you'd be able to get through, I think 20 in a day of this complicated one. I feel like you can do more if you're doing the surgical style. I think you can get a little further on that one because it's not as complicated, but yeah, this one, he's like, you're cheating. You've spent all this time getting ready. I'm like, really? I'm just getting to the point of if someone's doing the surgical style mask where I've got like the pieces together for the front and back. Like everyone else, if you're doing a surgical style, it's so much easier. And I mean, we've been going for almost half an hour and I'm still putting these guys together. So I think I am going to be able to get them all sewn together during this time, but I would have not gotten very far <laughs> if I wouldn't have done all this work ahead of time. Somebody's wondering if they don't have metal from those area with twist ties what can they do? I've seen people use pipe cleaners um in place of like metal or that. Um I've also seen like people are commenting like crazy on our social media on things that they are using and they're getting very thrifty. I saw someone cut apart um a bungee cord like what you would use to tie down like a a boat tarp or like something in your car and those things are filled with elastic i didn't even think of that as a potential elastic replacement and so they're using that when they can't find elastic um, our hospital is using wax thread um, that molds and so that is an option as well i'm not sure where you would so get that jewelry wire, I'm not sure. someone is also suggesting jewelry wire potentially I would just be be careful that whatever you do is like really well encased in there whenever you sew it in so that it doesn't poke anybody because it is pretty close to the eye as well. Oh, and we're gonna have an appearance of the future. Well, actually quilt her in training. She's learning to quilt. She did her own makeup while we were getting ready for this. So we're a little sparkly right now. You wanna say hi? Hi. Have your kids been helping sew masks? Our grandkids? Are you hiding? You don't want everyone to see your sparkles? No. They're so beautiful. They are beautiful. <laughs> She's also getting tatted up here because we have a deal that if, if we're good during the day that we get new uh, uh, I promise temporary we, tattoos. I promised three tattoos. I know. We've been forgetting the last couple of nights. So you're going to get three once this thing is done. <laughs> hey, babe, so like, hey, can you stand right here? Because I don't want you to get those pins knocked over all over you. 
I really need to get one of those magnetic ones because this gets knocked over way too many times. Um, uh, Mom? Yeah. I need to start on the C2. Yeah, you want to see too? Yeah. You can come up. Um, if you are just joining us, make sure you click on the link in the video description. Maybe Adam can share it again. We are giving away some prizes. We will contact you guys by email at the end. We're giving away a full quilt kit, all of our printed patterns, and a copy of my book. This will be three winners. Um, so definitely go click on the link, fill out the form. Thank you, honey. Fill out the form, and we will maybe send you guys a survey afterwards to see how much you've got done, um, so we can share that with everybody. And then that's that. also how yes. that is going to be a mask for a doctor or a nurse at our local hospital. Remember where you went to visit mommy after I had Lily? We're making them for that, so that way they can help stay and safe for, from the virus. And for the one that I. Got my hand stuck in. Oh, do you want to tell everybody about the time you got your hand stuck in the elevator? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what happened, Angela? Um, I I touched the elevator door and my hand got stuck in there. It was very scary for mommy. <laughs> we had to go back in. Uh, I uh, screamed. You did scream. You were very upset. We had to. Oh, is someone from France? Welcome. I don't know how to say welcome in France or French. Otherwise, I would attempt it. Um, but uh, so. a lot of people commenting about all your pinning. Some people commenting about. Uh, oh, I'm just using three. Well, I guess five per side. So I'm pinning my center seams here, and I'm pinning them in opposite directions, and then I'm pinning at the point where they overlap, um, where that pocket is. And then I'm pinning at my corners, and I'm doing that on both sides. Um, if you guys have followed me for any length of time, and, and I, there are probably a lot of you guys who have just found us from this video, um, I hate to pin. I cannot stand it. Um, but when it's necessary, I do it. Can you please sit down? Mama has trouble pinning with you in my lap. But anyway, back to the hand in the door story. So my daughter, Lily, had um, elevated Billy with the bubbles or jaundice when she was born. And we had to mm -hmm. like rush back to the hospital um, after her one week checkup because her levels were, were very high. Uh, well, not very high, like high enough to where she needed to be hospitalized overnight, but not like lasting damage high. But we didn't know that at the time. Our pediatrician just called and said, you need to get there immediately. These are critical. Cri they use the word critically high levels, which of course is going to crap out of you as a mom. So, um, you know, we're, we're hurrying up, we're getting over there and then we're trying to figure out where to go because it was a different hospital than we delivered in because they had like a pediatric ward there and Miss Angela has her hand on the door and it just like closed her hand in. And so I'm not even thinking, see Stephanie, you had a C-section you can go. You shouldn't be doing anything strenuous. I just like. And, and the x-rays. Yeah, she had to get an x-ray. Everything was fine. So I'm just like yanking on this elevator door to try to pull it open and get her hand out. And so then we end up in the pediatric unit. And I'm like, we may have two patients. And she's sobbing. And they're looking at me like I'm insane. And everything ended up being just fine. But the nurses, I think, were like, they were very concerned about me. About just not like being, you know okay there's <laughs> so much of emphasis on postpartum with and that's a good thing but they were very concerned about me and my how i was handling the entire situation once they took care of my kids so it, everybody was okay though so it's all good oh you guys enjoy seeing Angela? she is working on a my little pony quote right now well yeah we've been working on it for a long time so maybe someday we'll finish it Oh, you know what we have been doing for because we can't see she can't see her grandparents either. They don't live in town. And even if they were in town, it's it's just not great. Like my sister lives in the same town as my parents. And so in order to see them, they drove by and they like talk to each other through the car window. Um, and so we've just been doing a lot of FaceTime and Skype. She's been doing virtual play dates uh, with her friends. She had a virtual ballet class. Um, so technology is great. I mean, it's allowing, there's a, almost 200 of us on right now. 
Um, we're sewing together from all over the world and making masks and making a difference. And it's, you know, it can also help you see your, your kids. Like my, my great grandma has not met my youngest daughter yet. And my, neither has my sister. And because we don't live in the same town, but we can see each other and we can still get that. It's not as good, obviously, but it's better than nothing. It's so like these masks. It's better than nothing. So any other fun comments? No, Angela can, can kind of read, but I don't think she can tell if they're actually fun comments or not. So a lot of you guys doing the surgical style mask. I know that's the one that's the most popular. I'm about out of pins here. I'm gonna be doing some sewing soon. I just can't say enough how, you know, impressed and proud I am to be a part of this community. We're, you know, we're always willing to step up and, and help with something. You know, someone needs something, make them a quilt. But um, to be able to donate our time and our fabric and our resources and somebody talking about the not using the face yeah, we've I've gotten a few comments about that as well. So I've heard from some people who have used interfacing in theirs. And the main complaint of when that's used is that it's really hot because most of the interfacing out there, not all, but most of it is um, non-woven, which means it doesn't breathe. And it's made essentially from plastic. So the reason why people are asking for, the hospitals are asking for cotton is because it breathes. Um, it's a natural material, and so, um, you know, it's it's like when you wear a natural fiber versus um, polyester on a hot summer day. It's going to breathe better um, than if you wear something that essentially is plastic. So um, everyone who I've heard from who has been talking about interfacing is that it doesn't work very well um, from a usability standpoint. And I know like early on, people were saying that you needed a layer of your woven and a layer of your non-woven. I know I saw that pretty early on in the whole mask making saga. Um, but everything I've seen lately has been to avoid the interfacing and just go with your cotton fabric if possible. All right, I am down to one pin left, so I'm going to actually start sewing here. Although I still have quite a few here that need to be put together. But I've gotten quite a bit. I don't know um, if you can use 100% cotton fleece as a filter. Um, I am not a scientist, and so I am not going to say one way or another because I just don't know for sure on either of those things. Um, but I know that our hospital is going to be cutting up um, HEPA filters from vacuum bags because it's essentially the same material as what's inside the N95 mask. Um, now, my thought on that is as a, just a lay person, my job is to stay home as much as possible. And so I'm going to leave those HEPA filters to the professionals who are on the front lines of this. It is. She, she loves that. It's great for pressing. That was his nephew's mire. Um, so I'm going to leave those to the professionals. Um, but I'm not going to try and get something like that for my own yeah. personal use. I do not know where our hospital is getting filters or where they're getting backing bags or where they're getting hair ties. I hope that they have a lot because I know that the sewers are, are uh, responding to mass and they're going to have a lot for them. What, honey? Mom, you know I know how to sew. You do kind of know how to sew. You're learning. You're doing a very good job. Can I help you, please? Um, how about you hand them to me? Can you do that? I want to help you sew. Okay, you can help me, and eventually you will get bored, I'm sure. With this. Can you get another mm -hmm. chair, though? Can you sit? Maybe Dad can bring a chair in for you. Dad, can you bring a chair in for me? All right. All right, so I finally get to sew. Of course, uh, my quieter sewing machine decided to uh, stop working like the day before we had to go on stay in place. 
So it's just sitting on the floor right now. So I'm sorry. I have the loud sewing machine. Someone's asking about making what? Is there a way to make gloves? To make uh, gloves? I don't know. Um, I, I have no idea on the need for gloves or how you would make those to where they would be safe. Uh, hopefully that's not something they're running low on. This is always the fun part when it actually starts to really come together. Like it's been like it's been like six hours of work before I actually get to have one of these done. But at this point, you get a lot of gratification. I think it goes right off. Is that your chair? Awesome. I need a chair. All right, hang on. Let me turn this. Can I do so? Yeah, just a second. Here, how about we set you up on the other side? Let me finish this one, and then we'll set you up on the other side, and you can hold your hand on mine while I sell. How does that sound? Well, we're trying to sew as fast as possible today. So I promise you and I can try and sew them by yourself. But right now we're trying to do as many of these as we can in two hours. Isn't that kind of cool? All right, so I've got this sewn together now. I've sewn all the way around the edges. And then it's got these openings here, which will be for the filter. And then I can also use it to turn everything right sides out. Somebody's saying you have an I-95 mask. It looks... N N95 is the, I think the term. Um, no, I do not. Um, I have not tried to get any of those because they're not gonna do any good in my sewing room. They're gonna do good on the people who need them with who are treating this virus. Um, I'm sure you can look stuff like that up on the internet and see it. Um, but they kind of have like a cone shape that go around the front. But here we go. We've got our first mask finally together. I know. I'm sorry. This is a very, this is my loud sewing machine. My nice sewing machine. Um, this is my backup. My nice one decided to stop functioning like the day before this all went crazy. So we've got it together and it's got the filter pocket in here where they can put that cup of filter from the vacuum and just slide it in. And once it gets to the hospital, they're going to put wax thread in the top to help uh, shape to the bridge of their nose. And they're going to put double-sided tape right here also to help it hold to the face. And then they have a bunch of elastic ties for hair bands that they're going to fold over into this. And they wanted us to leave these open, or at least my hospital did, so that way they could make them different sizes for different face shapes. But you can see how it goes together. You're so making it fits one now with pretty good. Right? Well, this is the one that could have a filter in it, yes. Yeah. So this is the pattern. This is the Olsen pattern that my hospital has recommended. I'm just going to wait and press all these at the end, um, probably after. So let me move my iron because we got the little one coming over here, and we don't want to burn ourselves. All right, you ready? All right, come here. Do you want to press stuff, or do you want to sew? Because you can press stuff, too, if you want. This. You want to use that thing? Somebody, if you are sewing with kids. Somebody else got an error message on this form. Uh, it's working now. Or it should be. You can double check it again. All right, come here. Come stand over here. Come get in your seat. If you have kids and they are too small to be around irons, the best thing you can buy them is a seam roller. Because they can use that to press seams. You want to press the seam flat? It just rolls over the seam, makes it nice and flat. They think it's the coolest little toy. And it works pretty good. So. And they think it's a toy. Yeah, you do think it's a toy. All right, so. And I can keep back it. Back to my noisy loud sewing machine again. <laughs> so how's everybody doing? Are we staying on the bowl? Are you guys getting down what you thought you would? They, I'm rolling on your hand. You're rolling on your hand? That's not good. Oh, good. 
All good? You got it all ready? Let's yeah. hold it up. Can I do the inside? Well, you don't really need to do that. I mean, I suppose, yeah, you can do it like that. It's not going to hurt. Hey. Are you guys staying on track with where you thought you might be at this point? Let's wait on those. I'm going to have another one for you in just a second. Um, what I do is I just over stitch it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll sew a couple inches past where I started, and then I reinforce my stitches at that point. Because when you stitch over something, it locks whatever you stitched beforehand in place. Um, and then I do do that lock and stitch. This machine does not like back stitch. It just sews in place several times to lock that stitch in place. So like here, I'm coming around to the beginning. And this is not obviously a normal setup. We've got, normally we've got a camera in front, a camera overhead, and a camera to the side. And we edit it all together. But since it's live, hey, can you be quiet for just a second, honey? Since we're live, um, we can only do it from the computer. So I'm sewing like two inches beyond where I started, and then I'm stitching in place several times just to help secure that. Do you want to turn this inside out? Um, you want to try that? Yeah. That's what you want to do. And this one inside that out? That one is already turned inside out. So what you do is you take that and you turn it that way. And then it's like even you have tights, you got to turn this and get it so it's all right side out. You want to try that? That's a puppet. Yeah, kind of like a puppet. I'm also starting... Um, a little bit in from the corner so that way there's not very much stress at the edges because that is going to be where it gets the most stress from those plastic ties once that hospital adds those on later. So how's everyone doing? Do we have some complete mass out there? Are you batch sewing like that? We all, we're all bad sewing out there. Well, we'll have to. We should come up with a hashtag. Add a new rudder if that's kind of thing. Just, just do uh, the keep calm and sew a mask hashtag and then add Quilt Addicts Anonymous onto that and share it on Instagram how many masks you made so that we can show off, you know, all the, not show off because that's, that's not the right term, but we can. Encourage others to take some time out of their schedule and out of some fabric out of their stash and to help out with all this. Somebody made We got people cutting and ironing. We've got people who made some masks earlier today. I don't have no idea what to do. You're not sure what to do next? Now you gotta pull this end out. And you actually, you're perfect for this because your hands are small. So you gotta push that out and try and get it so that the ends poke out like that one, okay? How long does it take to make the one you're making and how much material? Oh Lord. Um, I don't actually, I think I'm going to be able to do oh, 20 man, of them. I think this guy eat a wolf. I sewed for like four and a half hours between cutting them out and getting them to this point. And then I think I'm going to need the whole two hours to get the rest of them together and, and press. So I would say maybe eight hours, seven to eight hours to do. Um, here, you can turn this one inside out. If it's not perfect, that's fine. Mom will fix it later. I would say seven or eight hours to do um, 20. And that's doing it in a batch. So that helps quite a bit. The one I'm doing, since there's no ties or anything with it, um, I can get three masks out of a half yard of fabric. I have heard that. Um, if you can't, didn't hear Adam over the sewing machine, um, they heard from someone not to top stitch because it's, it provides holes in the fabric. Um, every time you put a needle in, it, it creates a hole. 
and microscopic bits can get through. So I have heard that. Um, obviously, the process of sewing is going to create holes, and uh, using fabric glue is, is not good for this application because it's not going to hold up to the washing. So sewing is, it's, you can't get around it. But here's the good thing about fabric, um, and obviously I am not a, a scientist, this is not what I do for a living, but typically when you wash something, the fabric kind of shrinks up around whatever it is that was there. That's why if you like have a pinhole or something where you put a pin in, it will go away if you iron it or if you wash it. So I would hope that once it's, it's washed and sterilized, that that would be mitigated somewhat. Um, but obviously, like I said, from what I've heard, the majority of these are being used for people who are either not treating COVID-19 patients, so that way the, the good PPE can be reserved for the people dealing with that, or it's being used over an N95 mask, so that way the N95 mask can be used longer. Um, I was reading from one nurse where they had developed some way to do like extension tubing for the IV because every time they would have to go in to change an IV bag or check on, you know, levels or stuff, they would have to completely suit up, get a new N95 mask, and they were going through like 50 N95 masks in a shift, um, which is why they need so many of them. And here, you can turn that one inside out too if you want. Um, Somebody wants you to repeat the hashtags. Oh, let's do, sorry, the hashtags, and Adam can write them down, is keep calm and mask and quilt addicts anonymous. So if you put those two on, um, then we'll be able to see all the masks that you made. You guys are seeing all the ones that I'm making, but I don't get to see yours. Um, and that would be really great if I could see what you guys are making. And let me know, like, how many you got done and, and where they're going, and we can just see how big of a difference we're making. The Keep Calm and Sew a Mask, that's what's in the title of this video, by the way. Let's see, we're on our one, two, three, we're on our fourth one, so we're rocking and rolling now. That's the challenge of sewing with little ones. They're interested for like a hot 15 minutes, and that's why it's taking a very long time to sew for my little pony girls. <laughs> because she's in the mood, and then she's out of the mood real fast. So where are you guys all sending your masks? Are they going to nursing homes, hospitals? Some, Honey, you gotta come here so they can hear you. Someone's what? 70 masks. 70 masks, that is intense. Very intense. That's going to be one big payoff when you get to the finish point. Like, I'm feeling really good now that I'm at the finish point of about 20. I heard from one person today who's already made 200. I'm telling you, you all are going to need to, like, replenish your stashes big time. <laughs> this is all done. You know that everybody has a pile of fabric of what was I thinking pile. Like... This is the moment to use that <laughs> and just be like, why, why did I do that? You know what? It's a good time to get it because you feel bad. You're like, I bought this, spent good money on it. It should be used for something. Well, now it can be used for something and you can feel good about, you know, its purpose and then you can feel good about getting new stuff. The other thing I hear a lot from people is they inherit stashes from their moms or grandmas or whatever. And so they feel like they need to use that all. And they don't like it, but they they feel bad not doing anything with it. And this is a great time to, to bust out that fabric, too. You 
know, there's about, there's been at times, I'll tell you about 200 or so people on this. So if we all could get like 20 masks on today, that would just be so cool, so fantastic. So we have these going to NICUs, we have them going to rehab centers. Okay, also some grocery store workers, that's a great place to send them to. Unfortunately, you know, this is, is not as good as the actual thing. Um, but the person who was doing this tutorial for, for this mask that I watched from our hospital said that they did a lot of research on it. And they found that actual cotton will block about 50% of the particles, which is not great. You know, you should just stay home if you can stay home. But 50% is better than zero. So that's pretty good, I think. If you're unable to stay home. How do we attach ties or elastic? Um, there are, there's a link to a pattern for um, both of these, the ones that I used originally. So Adam, maybe you can share the links in, this, in the chat to the original patterns, because we did a video. Um, we went to order elastic on Sunday night and quickly realized that every single one of the distributors in the clothing world was out of elastic. And because you guys all responded in mass and brought up tots, which is great. Um, but I know a lot of people still wanna make these. So we did a video on how to modify patterns of call for elastic to do it with ties. But we have links to the original videos. So if you do still have elastic, you can follow those tutorials. And there's lots of them out there. You don't have to just watch ours. We love it when you do. We appreciate it greatly. Most of the elastic videos, though, they have it when you're at this point. Um, they have it set up so that way you are just going to... Um, have it tucked in the corners here. So like I'm at the end, so you would have your elastic tucked in there and on the inside, and then when you turn it right side out, it, it would just go where it gets to be. There we go. It's a little too far on that one. It has been really hard for me to like not go overboard with like finishings on this. Because typically when I sew anything that's going to be worn, like I do for seams and, and the whole nine yards. And I know that in this case, um, you know, function is, is a primarily thing. And it's not going to be like an heirloom thing that I'm going to pass on to my girls. You guys can ask questions about things other than masks, too. Um, I'm at least assuming that some of you guys follow us regularly. And so if you have other questions to ask, feel free. It doesn't all have to be about masks, though. Anything else fun, dear? I don't know about you guys, but once I started, once we did the video, I originally wasn't going to do a video because I felt like there were a lot out there. And then when I saw that there's this problem with getting elastic, I thought, well, we need to do something so people know how to convert their patterns. And once I did that, and once I started making masks, and we donated some fabric to a group here that's making masks, I started to feel better um, just about everything because there's very little that we can do and control besides keeping our butts home if we can. Um, but this, you know, you feel like you're doing something, and that makes me feel better. 
I hope it makes you guys feel better too. I'd love to know, are you guys quilters? Are you sewers? Did you dust off the sewing machine and have it sewn in years in order to do this and join the effort? Somebody's wondering how long you wanted to take that. Uh, well, that kind of happened in stages. So I was, this fabric is not like in my sunshine. Um, when my daughter, my older daughter, who you saw earlier was born, I was working at a marketing firm and it was like one of those soul sucking places that <laughs> just wanted all of you. And I knew that that wasn't going to work with a baby. So I started to figure, try to think, how can I monetize my quilting blog so that I can turn it into something that'll at least replace my income. And at the time we were doing this block of the month and it kind of blew up and everybody was wanting kits. And so I was able to um, start doing that kind of full time. And then it just kept getting bigger and bigger. Um, and we started doing kits for other patterns that I designed. And then we started offering select pre-cuts and like curated fabric bundles. And then um, one of our local quilt shops went out of business and this was probably three years or so ago. And so I bought up a good chunk of their inventory that was left and sold that. And it, it got to the point, it was all in bolts. And at that point we were still in our house and it just was nuts. Like we had fabric all the way down our dining room walls, both of them all the way down our foyer. It was just, it was, we were not set up for that. So I leased a space and this, this would have been like three, three and a half years ago. Um, it was just meant to be a studio, a place where I could work and design and then store inventory and fill kit orders, things like that. And um, then our local community responded very well initially to it. And so we ended up leasing the space next door to us and adding a whole lot more fabric and you guys online have really enjoyed it. And then we started focusing more on modern contemporary. And now we, you know, it's, we have, we're in a new space now, but, you know, we have the Stash Club with almost, well, with almost 300 members now, where we have new videos that come out every month. And then we send out new uh, back quarter bundles from Modern Fabric. And that's called Stash with Stephanie. And the book came out. It just, Basically, the short answer is we've been doing this for about five years, but it's been officially a full stop for like three, and it has just gradually grown over that time um, into something bigger than I thought it would ever become. So right now, Illinois is in stay shelter in place mode, so we had to bring like our critical inventory home. And we are still going to the shop, but it's just my husband and I going in. So it's not like anyone else is, you know, being exposed to anything. Um, but right now it's two of us doing the work of five and it's been a little nuts. So it's, that's why we're working all weekend to try to ship out your 40,000 twist ties for your nose clips. Um, because we have other things that we need to work on too. Like I've got a book deadline in a month and my second book and we have our regular orders to ship out. We've got our subscription coverage to start getting ready. And so it's just, it's an overwhelming time. We're going to take a vacation when it's all done. Um, but we are fortunate and, and we're happy and, and so blessed and grateful to all of you who have continued to order and keep us busy. I'd rather be busy than not have anything to do because, you know, we don't have any money coming in. Because that would be a whole other problem and would be very scary. So I would much rather be doing two people doing the work of five than the other. So thank you to all of you who have continued to order and support us in this time. We're definitely a small family business. My husband and I both work full time in this. Um, our income is totally dependent on us. 
We got lots of quilters, sewers, self-taught. Anybody like dust off their sewing machine just to pitch in with the mask making effort? I saw one comment from someone who was like, I have a sewing machine, but no room to put it. And I'm sitting here thinking, do you have an idea how many sewers just like take over the kitchen table? <laughs> and the family's got to eat somewhere else. And <laughs> so they take over the dining room table. Like, that is just, that's normal. Yes, honey? Oh, it's not, oh, no, I'm going to chew my hair. Yeah. Oh, we're an hour in, and I'm doing pretty good on this. How are you guys doing? Are you, are you? How long are the ties? Okay, everybody asked about the ties. They, we do say in the video with the fabric, which is about 40 to 44 inches. And I also put it at the very top of the video description. So I, this entire video has enlightened me that not everybody understands what the video description is in our YouTube videos. So if you see the video, right next to the title is a little arrow that's pointing down. It's to the right. So if you click on that, it's above the comments, right next to where the title is. If you click on that, then the video description pops up. And in that, we've got information about how long everything should be, links to the patterns. Uh, so there's always a lot of really helpful resources in that um, section. So I encourage you guys to always go look at it. All righty. My last one here. And then I get to pin some more. Someone is going to have a tropical face mask with these. That is for sure. What's some of the fabrics you guys are using? Are you going for like the pre or are you going with like the, oh my God, I can't believe I bought this fabric stash? Or are you just like me and it's it's pretty, you like it, you want it to go to the cause, but you just haven't touched it in years? Because that's pretty much what this is. I love it. It's pretty. I don't know when I'm ever going to get to it. So I might as well use it for this. Oh, well, I look great because of Jeffree Star Concealer. Let me tell you that stuff is magic. Uh, we got that and then the setting powder on the eye. So that takes care of any under eye baggage. Uh, let me tell you, that's it's good, good stuff. Um, but thank you. Uh, we are sleeping. She is sleeping pretty reliably from about 11 to 7, 7.30. So I'm getting about seven to seven and a half hours of sleep a night. Um, I have always followed with my first daughter and now with the new baby, um, the book called On Becoming Baby Wise. And in it, they get, basically give you a feeding schedule for their different stages of life. And if you follow the feeding schedule, the idea is that they will then um, eat, sleep, and poop, and play also on the feeding schedule. And so that means you can rely on the sleep. So both my daughter and now my older daughter and now this one. Somebody's asking about the stretch and which direction. Stretch and which direction. Okay. Um, so if you are doing ties, then you want to do that on the bias. Um, the bias is Twilight is her stuffed animal. If any of you guys are doing that, you want to cut in anything for a curve like this one. You want to cut your strips on the bias because you want it to be able to curve around the top of your mask. If you are doing a straight of grain um, one, like the surgical style mask, that one you can absolutely just. Um, just do a with the fabric strip and that's fine for that because it's it's just going to go fold straight over and you'll be good to go with that um for cutting these i kind of just did any which way because i feel like it doesn't need to have stretch um we want to kind of be where it is i did kind of try to stay with the grain either going straight up or straight to the side um but this is always the fun part when they actually get to this part and it looks like an actual thing. That's always fun. And this fabric is so pretty. This is Majestic Batiks, by the way. We used to carry a lot of this, and now we don't have so much Batiks anymore. Um, but it's super pretty. All right, I'm going to pin some more so I can at least get these guys all sewn together in the two hours. We'll see how we go, if we can meet that goal. But yeah, sleeping with a baby is fantastic. Somebody loves Angel's Green Monster. 
She's giggling. Yeah. Whoever said that, he made it her laugh. So that's good. <laughs> that has been the challenge, most challenging part is figuring out your work life balance with kids home. Um, I don't know if anyone else is dealing with that. Uh, if we have any moms this here, is Twilight. that's Twilight. My dog. Yeah, we had a dog named Twilight that we adopted. Then it died, and we, then I was very upset, and then we got this toy. So Twilight, we went to the animal shelter to pet kitties, and then we walked through the dog area, and we saw a dog that was 15 years old. And they knew it was 15 because it had been born at the shelter and had been microchipped, but whoever's, um, but the phone number associated with it wasn't working anymore. And so I'm like, uh, you're coming home with us. You're not going to live your last days here. And so we had her for about a year, and then she passed around New Year's. And... Angela was very sad and misses her. But we also taught her that it's really great to give all animals a nice home. So that's good. <laughs> What's so funny? It's because I saw the laying the down. <laughs> the person that said they like my green monster. You made her day, whoever said that you like her green monster. That is Anam. It is an internet thing that eats candy. That loves candy and eats it. We made an Anam pumpkin last year. Yeah. At Halloween because she loved it so much. This year we're going to attempt to grow our own pumpkins in the backyard. We will see how that works out. And there's a big puddle in the backyard. There is. We've had, I don't know, honey. We have had a torrential rain the last couple of days. So whoever asked if I was sleeping, I did not sleep great last night because right around midnight when I was about to call it quits for cutting out these things, my husband comes up and goes, uh, we have a problem. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about? And we have a house that's been built in the 50s. And the windows are all original, including the ones in the basement. And our basement is waterproofed, but uh, the windows are no longer sealed to anything, apparently. We discovered this because it was like a waterfall coming in through the where the window, like, sill meets, like, the frame of the window. And, oh, my God, it filled like a five-gallon bucket in about ten minutes. And so <laughs> our basement, we had been saving, like, all the kids' stuff in the event that we had another. And it's not organized at all. So it's like we're at like midnight and we're moving stuff everywhere. I'm like, as if there's not enough going on. We have a we have a pandemic. We're, you know, two people trying to do the work of five. We're doing this live thing and trying to do mass and whatever little downtime we do have. And now we have to move everything in our basement away from this window. And, you know, just hope it doesn't um, rain that bad again between now and when a can of clock comes from Amazon. So it's just, it's interesting. We have seen nobody but our mailman in weeks because we sort of sealed ourselves off a little bit before we had to because we knew that we wanted to, you know, stay safe for all of you guys who are ordering from us. And so we have not been to the store. We've just been eating the food that we have here. We stocked up ahead of time and I had been stocking up well before the insane buying spree happened um but yeah it's we've just been seeing each other and trying to entertain our children and feed the baby every two and a half hours and it's been crazy we're gonna need a vacation when it's all done i think the whole world is gonna need a vacation when it's all done just to decompress and relax okay we've got we've got some Oh, apparently we have spam on here. Well, it's just a very rude user. He is a crude, rude user. He's now, somebody's now popping up with another name. And... So did you figure out how to remove the rude user? Yeah, but they just popped up with some other name now. Well, you might just have to keep doing it. People, now is the time to be nice to one another. It is not time to be rude. They're not being mean to other people. They're just saying crude things. Goodness. 
Maybe go find something constructive to do. This is not it. We're doing something really constructive and I'm proud of it and I'm proud of the way our community has responded to this call for action. Like I said, I think it is, it's sad that we are in a state where our hospitals are asking for homemade masks, but I love that our community is, is more than willing to jump up and, and answer the call and do what needs to be done. So I'm proud of us. And I think I turned that upside down. So how long has everybody been someone out there? Are we self-taught and learn from the modern quilting movement or grandma taught us? Learn from online videos. We have hundreds of free ones, by the way, if you're looking for something. All right, this one is going to go, you know what, I'm, a, I'm technically a professional quilter. And this one is baffling me at the moment, so I'm going to put it in timeout over here. So <laughs> it happens to meet you, where every once in a while you're just like, what, what is going on? So what just flew over my head, honey? I think Rainbow Dash just flew over my head. My little pony went for a, a little bit of a fly there. You having fun? Yeah. I told you it could get a little crazy. Uh, learn from videos, some, you know, some videos. Oh, thank you to everybody who learned from our videos. We do have a completely free beginner quilting video tutorial series. So if you are new to this and you just need to know how to sew a stinking quarter inch seam, we got a video for that. So it's been sewing since they're about ten years old. Ten years old, that's pretty good. Technically I have been, but not like straight through. Angela. Yeah, Angela. <laughs> Hang on. We are having technical difficulties. All right, no more throwing stuff in here. Rainbow Dash ran into one of the lights <laughs> for for the video. I think she's, this is a symptom of being cooped up in the house for so long. She's flying over my head now. Can you tell that she's a ham? Maybe someday she'll take over Colt Addicts Anonymous and do videos. She's been in a couple already. I was originally thinking of sharing our uh, Easter egg silk dyeing video, but since nobody can go out to Goodwill and read the tie section, I thought maybe we'll do that again next year. But, you know uh, anything about Tesla like furnace filters being safe for use in the pocket? Okay, so the question is, do I know anything about HEPA like furnace filters being safe for the pocket? And the answer is no, I do not. Um, like I said, I am a sewer. I am not a scientist. Um, our local hospital I know is using um, vacuum filters, HEPA vacuum filters, because they offer about the same amount of filtration as the N95 mask. Um, but I know nothing else about that. Um, I'm sure that there is some research that can be done about that. I would just be careful as you're reading it that what you read on Facebook ads is not um, accurate. The only reason why I'm sharing with you the HEPA um, info is uh, vacuums is because I heard it directly from my hospital. Um, so those are the types of sources that you want to go to. You don't want to go to like your high school friend who's sharing it on Facebook because that's not an, an accurate source. My husband and I both used to be journalists and <laughs> there's usually this saying that it tells you she loves you with two sources. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, that's what you guys need to do. You need to do your own research on this. You need to look at what your own hospital and facility is asking for and because they've done the research on it Ooh. and they will know what they want and what is good. Yeah. Is Rainbow Dash having fun? Sliding. Do you want to play some videos Ooh. on your game, on your tablet? I don't have any videos, only a little video. Do you want to watch you two kids on Dad's phone? Yeah. Okay. I don't have you two kids on my tablet. Well, Dad's got it. Yeah, I can't
parenting via Apple at this point. We did earlier this week, my husband and I took, um, he took a half day because we couldn't, we, neither one of us felt like we could take a full day off just because it's been so crazy trying to get everything done, which is two of us. Um, so in the morning, I had my productive time. In the afternoon, he had his productive time. And that way we could have a whole day where she was got uninterrupted attention from us. And she had our full full attention and got to do fun things for her. And, I mean, we take family time every day. But it's, you know, we're here. We're working. We have to get work done. And while we have her doing educational stuff throughout the day as much as we can, get her to do it. Um, it's just not the same as her going to school and being with all her friends. Um, I know it's hard on the kids, I think. It's hard on the adults because we can't go anywhere. But it's hard on the kids because they don't fully understand why. She just says, when flu season is over. And I'm like, well, kind of. Kind of. That's kind of what that is. But Does anyone else have kids at home that they're trying to keep entertained without going crazy yourself? Or are you mostly hearing the stories of your own kids talking about trying to keep their kids entertained while getting everything done? I've been talking for an hour and 20 minutes. I need water. Somebody we learned from their grandma was a and she taught all of her seven children. And here, come over here so people can hear you. We know that we can't hear Adam. He's monitoring the comments over there. So I don't have to repeat everything. I get a break from talking. Somebody said their grandmother was a quilter who taught all seven of her children how to quilt. All seven? And they all remembered? Because that's the other thing. Because sometimes it skips generations. The first grandchild to have seer quilt. Pretty cool. That is cool. We, um, so my aunt Somebody has kids trying to study for AP exams. Oh, goodness. Another well, at least they have time to study for AP exams. Another person commenting on the use of a lot of pins. <laughs> well, you know, I'm just trying to keep them in line. But basically, I'm pinning at the seams so that they're both going in the same direction and they meet in the right spot. And then I'm pinning at my corners. And then I'm pinning about center just to keep everything together. Because I would rather have it all be together now than to run into trouble when I'm sewing. Um, like I said, if you have followed me for any length of time, you know I hate to pin. It slows you down. I don't like it. This is the first time I've pinned at all in this process. Um, I didn't pin at all when I was hemming stuff. I didn't pin when I was sewing my nose things together. Um, but at this point, it's, it's necessary to pin in order to have it come together right. I mean, we're doing this for our healthcare professionals. We want it to be good for them. Not that it needs to be heirloom quality, sewing, certainly not that, but we don't want it to be all bunchy either because that would be irritating and probably would also mess with the seal around the face if it's all bunchy in one area. So I'm just taking the time. I've got like four left and then I can sew my little heart out and Hopefully finish these 20 in the time that we're sitting here. I'm going to press them all, but we're going to call it done. We're going to consider that to be a success, I think. And really, that's not bad to take essentially like a 17-hour day broken up and get like 20 done. That's not bad. I feel like that's a pretty good day. We heard about what type of fabric people are using. Are they going for the, what was I thinking, fabric? No. We all have that stash where you're like, what? What was I thinking? For me, it's all of the vegetable prints that were really popular a couple years ago. It was just like all this like farmhouse veggies. And I look at that and I don't know what the heck I was thinking I was going to do with it. Maybe an I spy or something. But... I look at it now and I'm just like, okay, who would appreciate this? Because it's it's not me. And I have no problem if I have something in my stash like that where I'm like, okay, this is just not going to get used. I'm just going to pass this on to somebody who I know will appreciate it because otherwise it's just going to sit here and not get used. 
uh, Josie, who works for us, she takes anything smaller than a fat eighth because we don't sell anything smaller than a fat eighth. And I don't have any desire to keep that kind of fabric, that size fabric, but she loves doing scrappy quilts. So she takes all of that. Our other staffers have access to it too, but she, she hoards most of it. So Josie, if you're watching, I hope you're enjoying your scrappy fabric in this time. I feel like these back ones are so bright and cheery. They make me happy. See, how can you not be happy when you see that? Somebody got here late, uh, wanted to know, could you cover the supplies they're using, especially interfacing with the Okay, so supplies we are using, um, you are supposed to be using 100% cotton fabric. Full stock quality is good uh, for that. You want something with a tight weave, that is breathable. So that's why you want your, your cotton fibers because it's natural fibers. Um, interfacing, from what we have heard from people who have used it and tried it is not recommended because most of the interfacing out there is uh, either non-woven or made from polyester fabric. So polyester is essentially plastic. And that's why if you're wearing a polyester shirt on a hot day that it's not made for like moisture wicking something or other then you are going to sweat buckets because it just does not let the body breathe. So if you think about it, you have it over your face, it's not gonna be good. So from what we've heard of anybody who's used interfacing, uh, don't because it just doesn't let you breathe and you're not able to, um, people don't like the feeling of that over their face. So 100% cotton fabric, quilting cotton is great for that and no interfacing. The other materials are going to be dependent on the pattern that you are using. So we have linked in this video description and in our video tutorial that we did on how to do it with ties instead of elastic. Um, the two patterns that I used, one is a surgical style mask. Um, and then one is a N95 style mask uh, that I made for our family to use. If, if and when we actually have to go out, we haven't so far. So we haven't used it yet. Um, and in those, you can also use, we have some twist ties that a lot of you guys have, have ordered up. We've had 20 or 40,000 that we are attempting to ship out to you guys this weekend. And I've got one here that's already molded. Well, my daughter molded it a few extra times. Um, but essentially, you're able to slide it in to the nose piece of your mask and stitch down. And then you are able to mold it to your face. And so it just helps provide a little bit tighter seal because you can see it holds the shape um, here of my nice Italian nose. And so that is one way to do it. Um, if you have elastic and you can still get elastic, a lot of people are using that for their ears pieces, um, but that is becoming hard to come by. And so we did a tutorial on how to convert any pattern into using elastic into one that uses ties. So we can um, link to that. And if you guys are also joining late, um, we have some giveaways that we are doing. Um, maybe Adam can put the link in again in the chat feature. Um, we are going to give away a quilt kit for the top and binding of a lap size quilts that we designed. We're gonna give away a collection of all of my patterns and it's like 20 some patterns. So it's over $200 value. And most of them are scrap friendly, so you can get going on them with what you have in your stash while we're stuck at home for a little while. And then also, we're going to give away a copy of my book, Simple Quilts from a Modern Home. So in order to do that, you've got to fill out a form on our website, add a link to that. And we will notify the winners via email. And we probably will also email you all afterwards with just a survey so we can figure out how many masks we sew during this time because that would just be fantastic to be able to know how much of a difference we were able to make and you know how far flung you guys all were. I know we've seen people commenting that they're from all over the United States and we have someone from France on earlier and so it's just really exciting to see how the sewing community has come together all over the world to help meet this need for our providers. Um, I mean they are truly the heroes at this point um, as we as we fight this. 
and I'm just so happy to be able to kitchen as as Somebody asked, what, what do you use for straps or do you use elastic how long? So for straps, um, for the elastic, it, your pattern will tell you. Um, so follow whatever pattern you're using, it'll say. Um, when you are converting something, um, if you are doing it the way that we did in the video, you need about 40 inches of fabric. So uh, you can do with the fabric. If you are doing a uh, pattern that's straight across, like the surgical style mask, I've got it right here actually. <laughs> So this surgical style mask, I just did with the fabric. So I just cut a two inch by with the fabric strip, turned it into bias tape, or not bias tape, but treated it like it was bias tape, and then sewed it to the top and bottom. We'll show you how to do that in the video. This is actually upside down. The pleats are supposed to be going to the bottom. Um, so that's one way if you're doing this mask. And that's great for if you are not so confident in your sewing skills, that is a great way to go. Just stick with that style mask. It's easier to do. And there's a lot of people that are using them. And then you can just worry about just going straight across. Um, the other one, reach for it. So this is the N95 style mask that we made in the video. This one, because it has a curved top and bottom, um, that one you want to use the bias on. We show you how to prepare that in the video. And this one has that nose clip in it too. So you can see that it is retained the shape of my nose when I put it on there. And you can rebend that and do whatever you want with it and get it to fit um, more snugly because the closer fit you can get, the more you're gonna block out. And again, these are not going to stop you from getting COVID-19. From what I have seen is they are being used over N95 masks by hospital workers to help extend the life of the N95 masks because otherwise they have to change them out um, every single time they are with a new patient and every single time they see that patient. So I read from one nurse that they had to change out like 50 in a shift, which is insane. Um, and that's why they need so many and why there is a shortage. Um, and then they're also being used for um, in other areas of the hospital where they're not dealing with COVID, suspected COVID-19 <laughs> patients. So um, that way they can free up the, the more critical PPE for the people who absolutely need it to protect themselves from the contagious disease. Do you guys have your hospitals are asking for them specifically? Or are you guys finding databases? I know a lot of people are making them for continuing care centers and people who have to work out at, um, Grocery stores and things like that. Last one to pin together. Then maybe I might grab the one that I put in timeout earlier. We'll see. So you, one thing I do like about, this is a complicated, I mean, it's not horribly hard mass to do, the pattern that my hospital has requested, but it, it's got a lot of parts to it. So it definitely has taken a while to do. Um, but the one good thing about sewing on the bias is it's a little more forgiving. So that way, if my pieces didn't turn out perfectly, um, then, you know, I can make it work as I'm sewing it together. The other thing I did that was a really big time saver as I was doing these is when I cut my pattern pieces out, I pinned them to the fabric and I had like my wrong sides together. I just had my uh, half yard folded over on itself the way I would right after I would press it. And then I cut around it with my rotary cutter. And I do this whenever I'm doing any type of garment pattern. Um, but especially now because it's so much faster to go around with something with the rotary cutter especially something like this that doesn't need to be super precise. Um, I mean, it's not like it's going to be a wedding gown where it needs to be fit exactly. Um, and I was able to get through 
cutting all of these in about an hour or so, maybe a little over. We were watching the Tiger King while we were doing it. So basically about one episode of the Tiger King that I was able to cut in 15 in that time frame. So what, you know what, that's what we should talk about. What is everybody watching on Netflix? Because I feel like we are getting through this as, as a community because of Netflix. <laughs> it is keeping us from losing our minds. We can stream whatever. And can I put the tie nose piece in the square mask? Yes, you can put the tie nose piece in the square mask. Um, we just didn't do it in our tutorial because um, we were following the original tutorials. So I, I didn't want to deviate from that. Um, and the original tutorial for this one had a recycled clip from an actual N95 mask in it. And so I showed you an alternative that people are using out there. People are getting really creative and making things work. Um, for this and, and that's great but yes you can use them in both places I think we have a lot of people who are um, like I said we've had Courtney's in the chat ah Courtney Courtney Walters yeah. hello Courtney we've been texting earlier on she's, and off today she's watching the counterpart yeah the counterpart on Amazon Prime I'm going to have to check that out because we have similar tastes <laughs> and Courtney went with me to Stitches when uh, we taught over there at Stitches Midwest and she is our resident knitter. You're going to see her on the channel at some point when it's safe to get together and film videos again. Um, she's going to be teaching a beginner knitting series so I've got to actually send her some yarn so that she can work on some samples in between homeschooling her kids and you know everything. But so we've got that on the plan for 2020. I love knitting. But Courtney is, I have to look up still how to do things. Courtney is, is the one who just knows how to do it. So she is the one who is, is going to be the better knitting instructor for you all. What's everyone else watching? Any good shows on there? So far we're like, what, three episodes into the Tiger King? Yeah, it's incredible. It's just crazy. Like, you think. The layers to the story. You are think really that, you know, you know who the bad guys are when you get started. <laughs> who the CD characters are. And then you find out you know nothing. And it's just, it's so good. It's, and we can't wait until my daughter goes to bed and we can watch some more tonight. That'll be fantastic. That is a good thing about having a baby is you can watch whatever you want. <laughs> because they don't understand it. So a, the Tiger King it is not okay viewing for for, for uh, a five year old. That's we can't do that with her. But the, the baby, which knows no nothing else. All right, so we've got about twenty three minutes left. We're gonna see if I can sew through my pile, get all twenty done. That'll feel really good. We've got my daughter left Rainbow Dash, so maybe she will be helpful for us with that. How are you guys doing? How are you? Are you getting done what you think? Anyone have a bunch finished already? I'll we'll turn this so you can see the sewing. Anyone have a bunch sewn already here? Some comments about what they're watching. Horror movies and murder she wrote. I'm trying to get my husband to watch the latest installment of it. Oh, yeah, I saw Hallmark release all its Christmas movies early. Like, that's awesome. What else is everyone watching? What movies? Uh, watching the count. Oh, that was. All right. All right. Outlander. Outlander. Oh my gosh, Outlander! That show is so sexy. It is. It is good. I I was gonna maybe read the books, and then I realized that it was like. Like, I don't, I don't read, I mean, I read books. I go through a lot of books, but I do audiobooks, and it's like 35 hours, and I'm like, I don't know that I can commit to that. 
because it's a series, many, many series, each of 35 hours. And usually if we get to like over 12 hours, I'm like, okay. But the show, oh my God, that is just... Keep lost. You yeah. don't know what I'm talking about. More Christmas Marathons. Christmas Marathons. We have been watching a lot of uh, what's Doc McStuffins and My Little Pony. <laughs> I've been watching the Netflix Babies documentary. I think it's so cool. I started watching that after I had my daughter. I feel like. I think our devices listen to us because they know, like, you have a baby, and so they suggest the baby stuff. I wonder if Netflix, like, released the Tiger King early because they knew everybody was going to be doing this, or if that was just, like, the perfect, like, you know, they knew they, it was already pre-scheduled. But I don't know. Like, that is a perfect, like, binging, stay-at-home, watch-a-show thing. I also feel like the format of like any Netflix show is basically the format of any TV show where it's got like a two part where they just leave you hanging every single time because they know like in the last five minutes something totally crazy happens and you're like well now I gotta start the next episode and you never just start the next episode you watch the whole dang thing it's just how it is. They suck you in. And then it's like 2 a.m. and you're like, how did this happen? I need to go to sleep. Is our crazy commenter still there? Our rude commenter? They pop in. Oh, goodness. See, uh, watch My husband's watched that. I have not watched it. We did introduce our daughter to uh, Star Wars. I told her there was a princess who fights. And she thought that concept was pretty cool. I always try to introduce her to strong female characters in the right hand. If you're just joining us, sorry for the very loud sewing machine. My good one that is quiet decided to uh, act up the day before stay in place became a thing. So this is what I got for now. I have watched like every episode of Scandal, so I'm with you there. That is that is a fantastic. Show. I have not watched Suits, but I've been tempted. I wouldn't say I'm a royal like a watcher. Like I'm not, I don't care what Meghan Markle does in, in every second of her day, but I'm, I'm interested to watch the show and see like what she was like before she was the wife of Prince Harry. I think that would be kind of cool. Is anyone reading anything good? I haven't been able to do much because my, like I said, I listen to audiobooks and my daughter's around constantly. I don't say that like it's a bad thing, but she's around constantly. She's around all the time. And I know that the book I'm listening to now um, is not really suitable for her. And I don't think my husband would like it either. Um, it's true. I'm gonna say it wrong. It's been a while since I've listened to it because it's just been a little crazy. Truly, Madly Guilty by William Morani. I really like her book. She's um, the author of Big Little Lies. That's how I got to know her um, through that show we watched on HBO. And I read the book. I've read a couple others of hers. And it's, it's she's good. I like what she does. I think she writes real characters. They're all very upscale and tend to have a lot of money, so that part, you know, can't relate. But uh, <laughs> the uh, she writes women very well, I think. The person I just noticed this the person said they're watching the British Road said they're here in Oklahoma, but not that this opens on Crazy Joe's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's on crazy days out. Yeah, that's 
I, I won't judge anybody. That man is just very entertaining. I can't wait to see the next episode on that show. That was what we were watching when, when uh, my husband goes, we got a problem. <laughs> and there's like water just streaming into our basement through the window. And I'm like, I was talking to my dad, telling the story. My dad is very handy. He would have been out to Home Depot, bought the window, replaced it, you know, this morning during the rain break. And I'm like, we're just going to cock around it until this thing all pass because this is this is a little bit above our skill set. <laughs> I don't think we can DIY ourselves out of this, even with the best YouTube video. So... I don't know. What else do you guys watch on YouTube? I watch a boatload of gardening stuff. Boatload. Like, I'm attempting to have a green thumb this year. We'll see how it goes. My husband, I think, is a little skeptical. Somebody commented and said, believe it or not, Joe Exotic actually tried to run for governor. <laughs> Apparently, Joe Exotic tried to run for governor of Oklahoma. And this is the guy from Tiger King. You, if you don't have Netflix and you haven't watched this show, like, turn it on. It's, it's so many twists. And we're only, like, three episodes in. <laughs> it's so good. I feel like it's, like, a making a murderer vibe, but, like, with exotic tigers in the exotic industry. It's so good. So, so good. Has anybody dropped these off yet? Apparently, like for my hospital, they've got like some box that is only available for drop off, like during work hours, like what would be normally be work hours on weekdays. So I'm sure they've taken precautions, but I have no idea. I'm just going to be looking for like some black box, apparently. So how are you guys handling the drop off so you can keep your social distancing? That's what I'm curious about. Um, I had the baby lock Rachel, which is discontinued. Um, I got it uh, because I needed a backup sewing machine because my quilter's choice, which also is discontinued, I'm about 10 years old. Um, that was the one that I spent some money on. N not a ridiculous amount, but I spent some money on it. And um, so that one needed to be repaired. I was on the book deadline for the first book, and I knew I just needed a backup. And so I got this one. It was about 500 at the time. And the Baby Lock Jubilant is the one that has replaced it. Um, it has a couple more features. We have one of those at the shop as well so, um, that gets used occasionally there. That one has a nice little, like, tack button, so you're able to tack stitches in place. Um, whereas right now, I'm just kind of hitting the reverse button. And the threader actually works. I have never in the three, two, three years I've had this been able to get the needle threader to work for me. But the Jubilant does have a needle cutter that is reliable and will actually do it. So I know that's important for a lot of ladies who have trouble seeing the needle eye. Um, but this is this is absolutely 100% the backup machine. I did do our entire beginner series on this machine though, including quilting the quilt. So we quilt an entire lap quilt where you just have this tiny little bit of space because I wanted people to know that they did not need the best of the best machine in order to start quilting and in order to finish their quilts on the quilt machine. So if you want to check that out, it's a completely free. If you go to quiltaddictsonist.com backslash learn the quilt, it's over five hours of content. You get a free pattern. You get a discount that you can use on our website um, on shopping stuff. And we've got some kits available for it. And we did that whole thing on here because I... You know, you don't need the fanciest thing to get going. It's nice if you decide that you are into this and you've got the budget for it to get something fancier that has a few more bells and whistles, but it's not necessary to get started. There's some comments about dropping off. Dropping off? What are people doing? How are you guys handling uh, the drop off? Our Oklahoma, our Bill Exotic expert says that uh, 
they dropped the first batch off at a local hospital. They were happy to receive them. Now I leave tubs on my front porch. Friends and family know to swing by any time day or night. Um, so we have people dropping off at the hospital. Friends and family are leaving them on their, getting from the front porch. I've had a lot of, I'm seen a lot of requests job. online for that. Like people who, just, you know, their wife or somebody they care about works at a grocery store and they want to be able to have something to help protect themselves. Um, so it's not just, you know, the healthcare workers or the first responders. It's, it's you know, the people who still have to go out and, and check out your groceries or get you your medicine at the pharmacy. Um, you know, they can use our help, too. A lot of people just people come by and pick it up. Yeah. My, my dog has joined us, by the way. They have no contact. Well, I'm glad you guys are all being safe in the way that you guys are dropping off the mask. That's really fantastic that everyone is being smart about it. I've seen so many comments. People are like, just go to the dollar store and get blah, blah, blah for your materials. It's like, no, don't just go to the dollar store. The point is, is that you keep yourself home, use what you have or you order online um, or a place that will deliver to you. Um, I imagine if you are ordering your groceries, you might also be able to order hair ties. Um, to go in there, but my my dog has joined us. She's now down here, and uh, she's my fourteen year old baby, and one of our first rescue dogs. Um, I've had her since she was two. She was in a horse stall before she came to us, and um, I saw this meme, or it was like a headline. It's like the nation's dogs are loving whatever is going on right now. <laughs> they use use an expletive, so I won't share that here. But it was really funny because it's so true. And then it's like in related news, cats have never been more pissed off. And it's like, well, yeah, that's pretty awesome, true. <laughs> but, but I know we had a dog pass away not too long after. We had we have very old dogs. We had two that we had forever, and then we had a 15-year-old dog that we adopted at 15. They had them. So we had two pass away within two months of each other, uh, just because they're they're old, they got cancer, it is what it is. And so we were not, we were kind of concerned about how um, the lady who's the one that's left is going to do, but she's been pretty good because I've been home for some maternity leave and now with this. So, so far, she's transitioned well. You know, they know, they grieve you. Oh, I don't even have left. We're getting there. How are you guys doing? We got eight minutes left. Are we gonna finish? Are you gonna meet your guys' goals? Are ladies on track to meet their goals? What are you seeing? Let me know. Are you meeting your goals? You're sewing feverishly and not commenting? That would probably make sense. Should have had a co-host. I can talk you and be on camera with me next time, Adam. Courtney finished her fifth since she joined at seven thirty. Oh, Courtney's got five down. That's pretty good. That Courtney is a new co-host. sewer, so that's good. We had one hundred and fifty-seven of us on right now. So somebody says they've been cutting, ironing, and cutting the whole time. All right, so you are getting ready to sew a bunch more. So that's good. <laughs> they made the national news about that, and I won't say anything more about it. <laughs> but it is good that they're giving away so many kits. But uh, and I did hear that they also made a two hundred million dollar or two hundred not two hundred million two hundred million yard acquisition of elastic, so that way they can give away more kits, which is fantastic. That's great that they're doing it, but. 
somebody's asking how you feel about the live show. The live shows? How do you feel about doing this live show? Oh, I don't know. I've talked for a long time. I need a co-host. <laughs> it feels kind of weird. But it is kind of fun. Are you guys enjoying it? Or do you feel like I'm just talking way too much and my sewing machine is way too loud? Like, Somebody's let bad. me know. Ooh, we got nine almost done. Somebody's someone. asking, are you reinforcing the stitch over the last um, so for that, yes, I would do that. Uh, because it's going to have a lot of stress. So like one of the things, Courtney, who's on this chat, um, uh, she works for us at the shop occasionally. She's our mini instructor and you'll see her on YouTube videos. She made a couple of maps earlier where the, um, ties were going across this way instead of this way. And I was like, just, you know, do whatever works for you. But I did mine my way or across the top and bottom because I felt like the most stress is going to happen on the sides of the face. So if it's going to rip, that's going to be where it's going to happen. So if you're sewing elastic on, that's where it's going to be, have the most stress. And so you want it to be as secure as possible. So sewing over that a couple of times is definitely not going to hurt. It's going to help keep that and make it last longer. So I don't know. Are people enjoying the live? The Lasso yeah, so live? Yeah, lots of people saying that they are loving it. Uh, this is fun. It's more fun than doing it by myself. That is true. Although uh, you could be watching it. the Tiger King. Love it makes the time fly by. Our viewer from France says, I have a hard time to understand everything, but it's because I'm French. <laughs> well, you know, I'm sure I would not understand a word if, if I was speaking another language, so. Ooh, I got one more after this one. So two more. We're getting there. I'm going to be on time. Maybe. I won't have turned to anything, but that's okay. We can count it. It's exciting. All right. So to recap, what we would love for you guys to do is to go to the link, Adam will share it again in the chat, on our website, fill out the form to get yourself entered to win the prizes. Again, we are giving away an entire quilt kit. And we are giving away our entire collection of printed patterns. It's like 20 plus patterns. And then a third person is going to get a copy of my book, Civil Quilts from Modern Home. So please do that. It'll sign me up for emails from us, but we think we deliver some pretty good free educational content and it's a good list to be on. Um, I'm biased, of course, on that. But um, so we'll do that. We'll probably also afterwards send you an email just to figure out how many of these we got made because that would be really cool to know and to share with everybody. And then we also, um, if we would love for you to share on Instagram photos of what you got done and use the hashtag Quilt Addicts Anonymous. That's our brand name, our channel name. And then it also, the keep calm and sew a mask hashtag. That is the, what is in the title of this sew along. So you can find that pretty easily. And Adam will type that into the chat feature as well so you can see it there. Um, I believe this video you'll be able to watch it again and again on YouTube uh, if you want. I don't know why you would want to watch me talking for two hours if you were not following along and sewing with me. But hey, if uh, you run out of episodes in the time something to keep you going then that's fine go for it but we do have hundreds of free video tutorials that you can check out we've got a stash club we got lots of patterns um our plan had been just to share some more of that and i'm sure we will share some some scrap friendly patterns as this goes on um, but i know that everybody's focus right now is is on making as many masks as we can and we fully support you guys doing that um, again, one of the other big questions that we've been getting is when are we going to have more twist ties available for the nose clips? And the answer is next week. Uh, we've had um, over 40,000 requested and we started with 20,000 and then you guys snatch those up in about a day. So we are attempting to get all of those out this weekend and then once we make it through that, and get that out, that's when we will make more available to you guys. We just don't want you to order and think you're gonna get it that day and then be disappointed because it takes, you know, some time to get it to you. And of course, this, okay, I want you to comment right now if this happens to you. I am on my last stinking mask. We have 
30 seconds to go and I'm out of bobbin. <laughs> so I'm going to wind that later. Um, but for now, uh, I will wrap this up. I will wind that when I'm off so you guys don't have to listen to that. But uh, a boy got, I'm going to call it 20. It's pretty, it would have been 20 if uh, my bobbin had to run out at a very inopportune time. I feel like this always happens whenever you're sewing. Um, thank you so much for joining along in this. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm looking at this clock. It's 7.55. It's not 8 o'clock yet. I can sew this with something else. I forgot that we started a little early. I got another bottle. We're going to make this happen. But thank you so much to all you guys for sewing along. Um, there is a question. Ooh, we have a question. Good. They're that making we don't a straight have to... mask with elastic and a pouch for the head to filter. Yes. It's too small. I'm doing 9 by 7. What is the normal size? Um... I think nine by six is what they were cutting them to is the is what the original pattern was asking for. Um, but check with your pattern, whatever pattern it is you're using. And the small part, like this does look small. Like here, I'll put this on so you guys can see. So this does look small. Like this is about, I think I measured two and three quarter inches um, when you get all the pleats in. But you can see it really does expand all the way down. So this one started out at nine by six and then I made adjustments to it because we weren't gonna be flipping it, turning to flipping. So we made it a little bit shorter. But um, it does expand quite a bit as you can see. So it's definitely doable. Any other questions, burning questions? It doesn't have to be about masks. We've already discussed what concealer I use so that I don't look like a new mom with tired baggy eyes. Well, new mom again. Someone got 20 done. Ooh, someone got 20 done. Fantastic. My sewing machine does not like this fabric. It keeps wanting to suck it into the feed dogs. Somebody, uh, seen his knees, got 45 ready. So 45 ready. 45 ready. That's fantastic. I wonder who's, who's made the most, like, Stash in general. Oh, we have, are you using Stash and Fabric? <laughs> or are you using the right regret what I, was, what I bought there? Hopefully it's not the same. We got six done from another person. Yeah, I would not have nearly 20 completed had I not spent a good five and a half hours like prepping to get to this point because this pattern, it is truly very involved. There's another a lot question of about to it. the uh, washing. Yes. Um, I don't pre wash anything. And as soon as the hospitals get these, they're going to sanitize them. So I don't think you have to pre-wash. Um, if you are using fabric that you're not so sure on the quality on, uh, maybe it's super old or maybe you inherited it, maybe you want to give it a wash and make sure it's, you know, still sturdy. Um, but, you know, it'll shrink a little bit when people get to it, but I don't think it's going to make anything too terrible for anybody. All right, well, I this is 20 for me. Um, I've got to turn them all right sides out and press them, but we're gonna consider it done. So I was able to get about 20 of this. I'm making, again, the Olsen mask. Um, that is the one that my uh, place is recommending, my hospital. And they have asked that I get it to the point where you've got your outside, and you're inside with your filter pocket there. And they are putting vacuum bags in this with HEPA filters because they have determined that it is about the same um, amount of filtration as an N95 filter. And they've asked that we leave the nose clip part out because they have stuff that they want to put in that themselves. And also that we leave the edges unfinished. They're going to sew hair ties, excuse me, in there and they're going to adjust the sizes based on the needs of their staff. So I've gotten these to the point where they want them. I've got to turn everything right sides out. I think I'll do that while I watch some episodes of the Tiger King and then give them a good press. So 
Thank you so much for joining our first ever live sew in. I think this is for a great cause. Uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, please let us know and let us know like what we could do differently. Obviously, a quieter sewing machine would be fantastic. And I'm going to have to get mine repaired as soon as we're able to safely venture out and drop that sewing machine off because this guy is, this is not my quiet. This is the backup. But, you know, you do what you do. You do what you can do. Um, make sure you fill out that form on our website to enter yourself in to get the winners. We will let everybody know. Probably tomorrow we'll give you guys a good chance to get over there and fill out that form that you are here, and then we will um, mail those out. We do have to restrict it to U.S. only because we are hearing that we are not able to ship internationally at this time. So we want to make sure we can get that out to you so you've got a project to work on during quarantine. And thank you so much for taking your time and using your fabric and your resources and your skills to do this. It makes a difference, and I think it makes all of us feel better to be able to do something um, to help in this fight. But the best something you can do is to stay home. So we can't say that enough. Um, so please, if you can, stay home. And if not, just be as precautious as you can when you're out there. And keep calm and sew a mask. So make sure you tag that so we can see all the masks you made. And we'll figure out how much of a difference we made to this. Thanks so much. And until next time, happy quilting. <laughs>